This episode is brought to you by Milanote. Stick around to see how we used Milanote to organize a look inspired by this very episode. I had been on a walk in a rainforest in Queenstown in Tasmania, really deep green rainforest. And this idea came to me that a green kitchen would be really nice in this space. The brief was just to introduce new contemporary joinery that could house a more modern life. Leaving space for a little spontaneity to happen in the space. We adore the way Eleanor has transformed her Sydney apartment into a really cosy space, filled with the things she loves. Using Milanote, we can create a handy project board that brings together some of the design elements and items Eleanor used in her apartment. It's easy to add notes, reference images, and even videos. That way, we can have everything in one place. For this project, we'll make three different boards. A mood board helps us visualize the overall look we are trying to achieve. By simply dragging and dropping images and links, we are able to create a nice snapshot of the elements that make up Eleanor's apartment. A floor plan board lets us map out the key items and materials in each of the rooms. We love Eleanor's large IKEA bed with storage underneath. Using the Web Clipper extension, we can instantly add it to our board. No copy and pasting required. Last but not least, our product board, which we've also organized by room. We've added links to all the items, so it's easy to refer back to. The eyedropper tool lets us save the exact shade of green that Eleanor used in her kitchen. Oh, let's not forget the coral pink bedding. We love how easy it was to organize our Dali Studio inspired project. Milanote is free to use, so why don't you give it a try by clicking the link in the description below and start your next project. My name is Eleanor Paris. I'm an architect and I live in this 27 meter squared studio. Ballina is a pair of heritage brick buildings in Darlinghurst, which is an inner city Sydney suburb that has loads of shops, pubs, cafes around the neighbourhood. We're on the Gadigal lands of the Eora Nation. So I used to go to inspections to look at the architecture details when I was studying architecture of these old art deco buildings. I just liked them. When this place came up for sale, I had started to look for something to invest in. And I came in here and thought, I've been here before. This feels really familiar. And I was like, oh yeah, I came here years ago and it felt good then and it still felt good. These are art deco buildings, so built around 1930 with special brick details at the entrances, coloured tiles in the entry floor and stained glass windows through the stairwell. These kind of buildings I think are really typical of Sydney. It was originally built for the nuns that volunteered at the nearby hospital. I wanted to make the space feel large and spacious, but also provide a lot of storage and proper cooking facilities and all the tools for everyday life. When I first saw the space, it was a simple studio layout, seating around the window that moved into a kitchen space quite separate. And there was a partition wall separating the main living bedroom area from the kitchen. Removing that large cupboard allowed a continuous piece of bench height joinery to run from the back wall all the way through into the living space. And on the other wall, a longer, taller joinery element that incorporated a cooking nook. As you enter into the apartment, you see the original floors, which have been sanded back and re-oiled. Above the door, all the technology like NBN and internet and a projector are hidden by a special art piece my friend Ed made. On the back of the door and around the wall are hooks to hang your bags, coats, umbrella. Because storage space is tight, I use drawers underneath the bed by the door to store all my shoes. 
The first space you enter into is quite flexible. It's the living, working, dining corner. There's two large original windows here, which is one of my favorite parts of the apartment. They face east and they have this beautiful light streaming in in the morning. They have block out blind over both and a floor to ceiling sheer curtain that really soften this corner. You get a great breeze flowing through these two windows and they're a really lovely memory of the original design. There's a set of stacking stools that move around the apartment as need be. If more friends come over, they store plants or I use them as a stool to get up to high cupboards. I love to collect books and have them on display in the space where the tall joinery meets with the living space was a perfect corner to integrate a small library. The best part of the new kitchen is that it no longer feels like a separate space. The mirror definitely makes the depth of the space feel greater. The bench itself is a stainless steel folded bench with the sink welded in. The green, there's a laminate material sprayed with a re-seam custom finish. We've built in a washer dryer mini laundry under the bench, an integrated dishwasher, general storage. On the taller side of the kitchen, there's a integrated fridge and freezer, a small wardrobe, an oven, drawers to store all the cooking equipment. In the cooking nook, the same stainless steel bench top is used, but to mount an integrated gas burner stove. The wall tiles in the kitchen are the same Kit Kat Japanese ceramic product. I wanted to create a special feature, so I commissioned a friend to design a series of custom insert tiles to scatter around that almost create a small exhibition throughout the space. The new light in the kitchen uses the original electrical point and eye hooks to track new lighting across to different spaces where we needed it. So in the kitchen, it's above the sink. The bed is a king. A lot of people suggest I have a smaller bed to make better use of the space, but the king feels palatial and creates so much storage underneath. Most of the things I own in the apartment are under the bed. Shoes, bags, jackets. In the middle underneath, there's a large, longer space for suitcases and larger items. The bedside table is a folded sheet metal shelf. I needed a space to have objects by the bed that still gave access to the drawers underneath and through to the bathroom. That rock, it's from a residency I did in the west coast of Tassie. And one of my friends makes artwork with rocks and he gave that to me when he gave me a tour of the mines. The bathroom is the only space in the apartment with its own door, which is the original door. It's almost 100 years old and we stripped back the paint off that window to reveal this beautiful fluted glass. The floor tiles in the bathroom are a new light terrazzo, which are a nod to features of terrazzo throughout the building. The bath is original and has just been sprayed with an enamel paint. I put in a floor to ceiling white shower curtain in this space so that when you're not showering, the space feels as big as possible. And there's a large mirror cabinet mounted on the wall that creates this great shelf on top to store small objects that I collect. We're lucky that the apartment is on the corner because that means the bathroom has a window into the alleyway between the two buildings and that brings beautiful fresh air into the space. The wall tiles are the same as in the kitchen with small paintings by Angus scattered around. When designing a small space, I think it's important to make that space work hard so that living in it feels a little more simple. In 
designing a tiny home, I was quite inspired by how Japanese people live in big cities, especially in Tokyo. Actually, people end up spending a lot of their time outside the apartment, and I think that's a really beautiful balance between creating a really peaceful place inside, but also at places where you have a sense of community. Psst. Want to see something we've been working on? Never Too Small Volume 2 is available for pre-order from our store at nevertoosmall.com with books shipping in February 2024. I know, soon. You're welcome. Thanks for watching. And if you're an architect or designer with a project we could feature, please share it with us at nevertoosmall.com slash submissions.